Hi everyone, let's talk about arrays in JavaScript. Now, one of the ways that I really like to experiment with JavaScript is just inside a browser uh, and I just go to the console and start writing some JavaScript. So I'm going to be doing that. You're more than welcome to, for instance, create um, the, the typical environment for me to play with JavaScript is also like to create a um, node application or a, uh, yeah, a simple node application. And then I put some uh, linter in there and I then uh, use the live plugin in Visual Studio Code so that I can save my changes in a document and for those changes to take effect directly in a browser. But I thought since we're only going to be talking about arrays in this uh, video, it's a lot easier if you just use a console as I'm doing here. So let's, uh, let's get started without uh, too much introduction. Well, um, arrays in JavaScript as they are in, in many other languages is a their data structure that holds um, elements usually of the same type. Um, but not necessarily um, next to each other. It's very similar to a doubly linked list in that you can traverse forward and backwards in the array, uh, but elements themselves don't know about elements after them or before them. So in that sense, it's dif different from doubly linked lists. So um, the way you can create an array is with a square bracket, and uh, you would usually do the same thing in all languages, for instance, in Swift, you can do the same thing and you can do the same thing in Dart. So um, one of the ways that I like to create uh, arrays in JavaScript is using const. So I just say const names, for instance, as, as you can see, I've created one before. So I can just say const names is equal to foo bar bass. And how this works is uh, it basically creates um, an array for us and allocates uh, uh, three spaces in the array for these three strings that we're placing in array. So um, I'm going to create this array as it is now. And then if I just say names, uh, you can see that my browser is also uh, helping me with different uh, variations that I can enter here. So if I just say names here, you can see it says foo bar bass. Now there are different things you can do with arrays. And uh, one of the most popular or one of the most used functionalities of an array is actually to extract an item from it. Uh, once you place an item in an array, you want to extract items from it. And the way to do that, or the classic way to do that in JavaScript is with a subscript of, for instance, saying zero here. This gives us foo because items in an array, as they are in almost every other programming language, is that they're zero based. And that means that the item, the first item has the index of zero. And this kind of goes back to the assembly uh, time. I remember where you had a base offset and a base offset was zero. And then you could increment that by the size of the pointer of every value in the array to jump to the next one. So it was usually that if your pointer is at place zero, then you're going to the base of your array. Where, it, where the array itself started in the memory. So this kind of goes back all the way to assembly or, or maybe even before that. I don't know what comes before that. But uh, if you're wondering, that's where it comes from. So zero is the index of the first item in array, as you can see, foo. And then you can say one via bar and et cetera. So that's really good. And um, you can also say, for instance, four in here, as you can see, we have index zero, one, two, but we don't have index of three or four. But what happens is that you get undefined. Uh, and this is um, different from null in JavaScript. I'm not gonna go into details about that, but uh, just know that you're gonna get the value of undefined. Now there's another function. There's nothing wrong with uh, subscripting your array with the square brackets, but there's also another function called at, uh, which is um, kind of, a bit more advanced um, in that you can, for instance, um, now we haven't talked about length of an array. We can do that. We can just say length and you can see that you get a value of three. So that's a property of an array that you can say dot length. But uh, one of the uh, main purposes of using length is actually finding the last item in an array. And you can do that by subscripting and say names length minus one. And you can see that you get the last item in an array. 
but there's another function called at, uh, which works similarly to a subscript in that you can say names at and zero, and this gives you foo. But if you say at minus one, this gives you the last item in the array. So it's kind of like a, a newer variant to subscripting or better version of subscripting. But um, if you read the MDNs and, and, and documentation, documentation for uh, arrays um, on Mozilla's website, you, you can see that at isn't really, if I'm not mistaken, it's not really implemented correctly in all browsers or not implemented at all in some other browsers. I think Edge, Microsoft Edge doesn't have that implementation. I may be mistaken, but we have to look at the documentation for that. But just know that it's there for you to use. Now, now we're talking about length. Um, you can also, or it's important that you also know that you can change the length of an array. For instance, here, name's length is three, but I can say length is equal to one. And what this does is that it actually trims the array so that it removes all the items uh, in the array except for the first item. Now, length, it's uh, since length itself doesn't work with zero base indexes, uh, or indices, how you want to call it, uh, hence its value is not also zero base. So if you say length is zero, it actually is going to clear the array for you. So names is now an empty array. What I mean by that is that if you want to just hold on to the only item in the array or the first item in the array, you have to specify length is, le is equal to one not zero because that's going to empty the array for you um since you can you can trim the array by reducing this this the length of the array you can also increase the size of your array by increasing its length so for instance if we go to our uh, main example of saying uh, foo bar baz oops uh, i took this example um as you can see here foo bar baz uh, i can also say length is equal to 10. Now this is going to create an empty uh, instance in, in our array. Um, as you can see, it's beautifully explained here seven times. It says X seven. So if I say names four, then we're going to get undefined in there. So that's how you play with length in arrays in JavaScript. You can either read the value of, uh, of the length or you can assign either a lower length as it is to like right now which is gonna start removing items from right hand side or at the end of the array until it gets to that size that you specified for the length or if you specify a length that's more than the current length length of the array it's gonna create undefined items um, or empty spaces in the array until the array is, is the size that you specified for the assignment to the length property now um, one of my favorite uh, other functions that's available for uh, arrays is for each. And you can see this is a function. Um, and the way you use for each is um, you, there's three different um, uh, signatures that you can specify for the for each um, argument, which is this callback. Um, and callbacks are very they're very common to use in JavaScript. When, when a function does something and it doesn't know what to do with it, it can either return that value or it can actually call a callback for you with the value that the function is producing. And for each is one of those functions. And um, not surprisingly, for each works pretty much the same way in every language uh, that has functional capabilities, just like JavaScript. And the first uh, way that you can use for each is if you just say element, for instance, and then you can say console log element. As you can see, it goes through every element in your array and then prints them out, foo, bar, bass. The other signature is if you provide an index. So you can say console log uh, item um, element has the index of, and then we say index. Just like that. Did I miss the syntax somewhere? Bup, 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 bup. I don't see really. Oh, it's here. I think that's it, right? Yeah. So you can see item foo has the index of zero, item bar has this index of one and two. So that's the next syntax that you can use for for each if you specify the element and the index. And the third, which I've 
never really had to use is to actually provide a third index or the third parameter to this function. And this gives you the entire array. So if you say, for instance, and the entire array is $ARR, boom. And it gives you the entire array, just like that. So that's that's for for each. And um, the other thing that you may want to do with arrays is finding items in them. Um, and I usually use index of. So I can, for instance, say names index of, uh, and I can say foo. And you can see I get zero. So if I say names zero is actually foo. And if I say index of foo, spelled like that with a capital F, then I'm going to get minus one. So uh, you know that minus one is when an item cannot be found in, um, in an array. And um, if you're interested in finding, for instance, um, if something exists in an array you don't that you don't want to really mess with index of and compare that with minus one, then you can use the sum uh, function. So you can, for instance, say sum, and I can say value. And here you return um, Boolean. Basically, this is this is very similar to for each, um, in that it iterates through the array for you. But in your callback to sum, you need to return a boolean value. So your return value from the sum function indicates whether you've hit the right spot or not. So in here, if I, for instance, want to find um, a value that has a length equal to three, then I can say value length three. And it says, yeah, I found some. I found something here. It's true. Uh, or if I'm specifically looking for foo, I can do it like this. Sorry about that. Like this, true. So you can use this a lot. I, for me, it's a lot easier to use sum in a, a Boolean um, if just a normal if statement rather than index of, because it's just index of is, for me, is a bit dirty, but it's it's fine also to use. Um, and you may also wonder how you can remove um, items from an array. So names at the moment is food, bar, baz, empty. Now I want to get rid of, now I'm diverging a little bit, um, but if I want to, for instance, remove the last empty items, you can see there are seven empty items and then there's three re real strings in this array. I can either say names length is equal to three. And by that, by this functionality or by, by doing this, I'm essentially removing everything from the array except for the three first elements. So that's going to work beautifully. Um, but also there's another way of doing that. And that is using splice. And I can say splice, um, it takes first the, I believe it takes the position. So it's, it was, uh, it says, okay, from where do you want me to delete the items? And I say, not index zero, not one, not two, but index three. And I want you to remove seven items. Boom. And now names is food bar bass. So um, depending on your on your use case, you can either use splice to remove items from your array, or you could actually specify a new length. In this example that I showed you right here, set for me, and this is a preference, setting the length to three <laughs> would actually be a much better solution. Because in here, I'm assuming there's seven empty items because I knew that there's seven empty items at the end of the array, but, um, and that's why I've written splice three, seven, because I know there's seven items at the end that I want to remove. But if I'd say that the length is equal to three, then it means that whatever number of things are at the end of this array, I just want to keep three items. So really depends on your use case, how you want to work with it. But to me, I mean, I, I always um, make a decision. It's not, it's not a black and white thing for me. I, I, I need to basically look at this scenario and say, mm, in this case, it makes more sense to delete items with splice or maybe with just setting the length. So, um, so that's, that's for deleting things. And then 
there's another thing um, that you, there are two more functions that I use quite often in, um, in JavaScript with arrays is uh, shift and unshift. So um, if I say shift, this, this is a, uh, let's see, names shift. This is, is, is going to give us a function and then there's a unshift, which is another function. Now shift removes items from the beginning of an array and returns them. Um, and if if you say if you say um, const value is names shift um, value is now going to be foo, which was as you can see here, which was the first item in the array. And if I say names, you can see there's only bar and bass left. Um, now there's another function that is very similar to shift is unshift. And this, oh, <laughs> I find it a bit strange. Um, it could have been called insert or something, but it's just called unshift. As shift removes items from the beginning of array, um, unshift adds items <laughs> to the beginning of an array. And uh, I the, the, the focus is on items. It's sit, as shift removes an, an item, from the beginning of, a, of an array on shift adds items to the beginning of an array. And, I, and by that, I mean, like, um, if I say just names shift, now names is only Baz. But if I want to add foo and bar again to the beginning of names, then I can say names on shift foo bar. Now names is back to foo bar Baz. Now, um, there's lots more that you can do with arrays, uh, but um, my recommendation is always to read the documentation and learn from some examples. Stack Overflow is a good resource, but uh, most importantly, um, play with arrays yourself. Uh, open a document somewhere, at, or maybe as I'm doing in just a console in Chrome or even in Safari, you can open a console and write some JavaScript and play with arrays yourself. And if you have any questions, please do let me know. Have fun. Thank you.